welcome to Adventure Church Online. We're so thankful that you're tuning in today, especially wanna welcome all of you who may be joining us for the very first time. Let me just say, welcome home. I know we're not welcoming you to a physical building, but we are welcoming you in to our Adventure Church family. And we just want you to know this, that regardless of where you come from and what may be going on in your life, that there is a place that you can belong to and a family that you can be a part of. And so we're so thankful that you've joined today. In fact, we'd love to follow up with you and send you a free gift as a way of saying thanks for being part of our experience today. And if you will just text the word CONNECT to the number here on the screen, uh, one of our team members will follow up with you and we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. But thanks so much for joining us today. For the rest of you, we're gonna go into a time of worship And as always, we just wanna take a moment to kind of just distance ourselves from all distractions and focus our hearts and our minds in on the Lord. So as the team leads us today, would you do that? Would you just maybe silence your phone unless you're watching on it and, and whatever else may be distracting you. And let's just focus our hearts on the Lord and invite his presence to come because it's in his presence that we're changed and it's in his presence that we can experience the life that he's created us to live. Let's worship together. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what freedom feels like. This is
feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall
Well, what an awesome video where we just take a minute this holiday weekend to just press pause and to remember what this weekend is all about as we honor those who have paid the ultimate price for the freedom that we get to enjoy in this great country that we live in. And so we do honor and celebrate those people today. Well, as we go into a time of giving uh, this morning, we're gonna highlight one of our partners and it's the triplets. They are uh, a couple that planted a ministry in El Salvador uh, over 30 years ago. They've been living there and have given their lives to what God is doing. Uh, they have built a tremendous ministry with tremendous impact all over the country of El Salvador. They literally have seen millions of people give their lives to the Lord over the last 30 years. And we've sent two teams there over the last couple of years and have been doing ministry with them. And they're in a very difficult spot right now. Uh, we reached out to them this week. We've just been kind of touching base with all of our ministry partners all around the world. And as we reached out to them, they just let us know one, that in El Salvador, the government has really put some strict lockdown in place. And so they've had really zero contact with many of their employees and many of the people who are part of their ministry. Uh, they had over a hundred trips of people who were gonna be coming in this year that they've had to cancel those things and really with no plan or end in sight. And, and so financially, they're just in a very difficult spot. And so we obviously want to help them and uh, help them pay their staff. They haven't been able to pay people and they themselves are just really getting to a place of going, we don't know what's going to happen. And they're just trusting God and believing God. So I thought, man, what a better uh, opportunity. There is no better opportunity than right now, since we had to cancel our trip there to maybe send the same amount of resources that we would have been sending uh, if we were going there uh, to really help them get through this time. And so we've committed already uh, to send $5,000 down there to make sure uh, to try to help them get through uh, the next few weeks. And if, if, we, if we get more in, we're gonna send as much as we can right now to help them. And so I just wanna encourage you today as you give, one, to know that we have partners all over the world that are navigating this pandemic just like us. And your ongoing continued support of our next initiatives is making a difference all over the world. And today we're gonna take some of those resources and really make an investment into our friends down in El Salvador to hopefully help get them through this pandemic as well. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for enabling us to be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus all over the world. You can give online all the time at adventure.church slash give. We're so thankful for those of you who have set up recurring donations. We greatly appreciate that, especially during this time. It really helps us uh, navigate our budget and our spending in, in this season that we're in. And you can also, the easiest way is just to pull out your smartphone and text any amount to 84321. Uh, it'll send you a link. You can set up text to give recurring as well through that. And you can continue to invest in what God is doing, not just at Adventure Church, but all over the world. Would you join me in praying? for the triplets today in the ministry, King's Castle in El Salvador. Father, we thank you for the triplets, for their life, for their commitment and their dedication to your kingdom. 30 years living in a foreign country and ministering to the people of El Salvador, God, and you have done tremendous things there. They're in an unprecedented time that they've never been in before. And I pray that you would just show yourself faithful to them in this season and Father, that through this gift that we're sending, that it would encourage them, that it would strengthen them, and that it would help them in this season. God, bless them today and bless everyone out there who's investing into your kingdom and being generous with our lives and with our money. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for giving today. What's up, everybody? We're gonna be continuing in our I Got Issues series today. And today we're gonna to be talking about a topic 
that I've kind of been debating, if I'm going to be honest, throughout really this season we've been in of online church and kind of navigating this pandemic, uh, if I was going to talk about it. I knew it was relevant. I knew it was real. But when you talk about this topic, oftentimes it can kind of be uh, misinterpreted and, and especially uh, from a church's and a pastor's perspective, it can kind of come off like trying to to maybe take advantage of the situation. And today, I just want to start by saying that is not it at all. The topic we're going to talk about today is so vital and important, really, to, to every area of your life. I could not not talk about it. And it's going to be about money. And we're going to talk a little bit about some money myths uh, that our culture uh, sends out and talks about. And really, I believe that the enemy uses to, to really get us way off track and away from God's plan for our life. And so we're going to dive into this topic of money. And maybe right now in this season, some of you are kind of reaping what you sowed. And for some of you, that means you, you took financial peace, you believe what Dave Ramsey che- teaches, and you had three to six months of savings uh, put away. And you had a rainy day fund set up and the rain came and you were ready for it. You were prepared for it. Others of you, maybe you're in a situation where you were living paycheck to paycheck. You got furloughed. You lost your job. You tried to get unemployment. You're still waiting to get unemployment and you're in a different situation. But regardless of where you're at today, when it comes to your finances, when something of this magnitude hits us and shakes us and kind of rattles the foundation of our world and culture, you definitely start asking the what if questions about money. Maybe it's okay now, but you go, is it going to be good in September? Is, is my job going to bring me back? Are they going to realize maybe they didn't need my department? What is going to happen with the what ifs when it comes to money? And unfortunately, our world has kind of set us up to fail when it comes to what I call these money myths that, that really a lot of us have believed and really applied to our life. And the statistics tell us that, that the majority of Americans spend everything they make and then some. Uh, they're living with debt. They're living in debt. And the debt becomes a burden, listen to me, to every area of your life. The number one cause of divorce is money. And it's not having too much money. It's the debt of money. It's the tension of money. It's, it's, the, it's the, the argument of where we should spend our money because we don't have enough money, right? That is what causes the tensions and, and the issues. And, and the, the biggest issue with, with most of us when it comes to money is margin. We have no margin. There's no breathing room. And there is a formula for success when it comes to money. And if we apply these biblical principles to our life, it won't just bring us success financially. I believe it will bring the blessing of God to every area of your life. And that's why I had to talk about the money issues that many of us are facing in our lives. But this is the American way when it comes to finances. And We've accepted it as normal. I believe they say the average American has somewhere around $15,000 in credit card debt, right? That's not just like home debt, car debt, credit card debt. And, and, and we've embraced this idea of debt and, and this strategy, if you want to say, when it comes to borrowing, all these things, as kind of a normal, right? Right now, we're hearing all about the new normal. What's the new normal going to be? We're going to get to, to normal again, but it's not going to be the, the old normal that we had before. It's going to be a new normal. And I believe that we have to get to a new normal when it comes to how we deal with our money. It's so important that Jesus spent the majority of his time, he had three years of ministry on this earth when he announced that he was the Messiah until he went to heaven. And he spent the majority of his time talking about this topic of money and possessions and how to handle it properly in our lives. So what's the answer? to financial stability? What's the answer to financial security? What's the answer to financial success in our life? And I know what you're thinking because it's what most of us think. We think the answer is more money, right? But as the great philosopher said, Biggie Smalls, mo money, mo problems, right? And that's really the reality is we think it's more. 
Think about the government stimulus, right? How many of you, uh, if you're at home, you, you, got this, you got the stimulus check and you got a little extra and, and the government, when, when things got rough, they injected more money. They printed more money and put it out into the economy. And so we naturally think when money's tight, when things are, are going wrong, the answer to my problem, the answer to have financial success is just to get more money. But let me tell you something, more money is not the answer because more money doesn't generate more self-control. More money just makes you more of what you already are. That's why people who win the lottery, the majority of them are bankrupt within a few years because they had bad spending habits before they got a bunch of money and they had bad spending habits after they got a bunch of money. So the answer is not more money. Think about it. How much more money would you need to stop spending more than you make? How much more would you need? How much more money would you need to make you get completely out of debt? How much more would you need? Probably way more than you're ever going to get at one time, right? Think about that. How much more money would you need to create financial margin in your life? What we really need. Think about this. There was probably a time in your life that, that you said, if I could just make blank amount, if I could just make whatever that amount was, you know, I can remember that as a church, as our church was growing. As soon as our church gets to this budget size, I'd be able to hire someone else. I'll be able to do these things, right? And that mark always continues to keep going, right? You never catch it. You, there's gonna be more vision. There's gonna be more things you need more money for. And, and there was a point in your life that you said, if I could just make blank amount, I would be worry-free when it came to, to money. And now you make that much money and you still worry. <laughs> you make that much money and you're still stressed out. It's because we haven't embraced these principles that God teaches us in his word. Why do we still feel that way even now we make that? Because unless you've been taught a new normal, a new way of thinking and living when it comes to your finances, you're gonna continue to do what you've always done. There has to be a new normal. We gotta get through and deal with these money issues. So the answer is not more money, but the answer is more, but it's not more money. It's not more stuff. The answer to our money issues, listen to me, and this is again where it gets a little tricky for a pastor, is more generosity. Today, the church doesn't need your money. We're not in a bad financial position. We're not gonna ask you to give to, to, to something. That's not what we're doing today. But I'm telling you, scripture teaches us, and I'm gonna prove it to you this week, and I couldn't get it all in in one message. We're gonna do uh, another myth of money next week. But, but the answer is generosity, and generosity is the key to unlock the financial freedom you're searching for in your life. In Acts 20, 35, the apostle Paul says, let's remember the words of the Lord Jesus himself when he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, if, if I could see a show of hands, I think most of us watching today would say, I've heard that before. It is more blessed to give than to receive. But do we really live as though that is true? I know I struggle with it. I think it's more blessed to receive than it is to give. I think all of us have, kind of have that inner child, I don't wanna share my stuff in, in, in us that says, it doesn't make sense to give away to receive more. It just doesn't even make sense. It doesn't compute. But Jesus said, the more, the more you give, the more blessed you will be. Blessed in the Greek here meant the more well off you'll be, the more happy that you will be, the more fulfilled you will be when you give more than you receive. And scripture teaches us and shows us that generosity is God's plan for less stress and more success when it comes to our money. I think I need to repeat that for you because this is the thing that we struggle to believe. And when you don't believe it, you will never believe it. You will never live out these principles unless you truly believe them. And scripture teaches us that generosity is God's plans, listen to me, for less stress and more success when it comes 
to our money. That's what we all want. Less stress, more success. The blessing of God, the hand of God on our money. Jesus said this in in John 13, verse 17. He says, now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. (laughs) You know these things. You've heard that scripture before. None of you were like, wow, Kyle's blowing my mind today. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. I've never heard that before. No, you've heard that before. But Jesus says that the blessing always follows the obedience. It it says, you know these things and you will be blessed. I will bless you when you apply them, when you do them, when you activate these things in your life. And generosity doesn't just happen naturally. We're all born naturally to want to hold on to our stuff. We're all born with this natural mindset to say, no, it is more blessed to receive than it is to give. But Jesus says, no, that's not true. You will be more blessed, in that word in the Greek, more happy, more fulfilled, and better off the more you give than the more you receive. You see, every promise of God has a premise. There's something that you have to do to receive that promise and to receive the blessing of God on your life, on your finances, on your wealth, on your possessions, all that stuff, we have to do what he tells us to do. In Ephesians chapter five, verse 15 through 17, the apostle Paul says, be very careful then how you live. You have to give thought to the way you live. Not as as unwise, but as wise people making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, today, hopefully we're bringing understanding to what the Lord's will is when it comes to our money. And he says, so don't be unwise, be wise and do what the Lord tells you to do and you will reap the blessing of that obedience in your life. It's, it's, it's basic principles here, but oftentimes we miss the point and don't really apply it to our lives. So Paul says, as Christians, we are called to walk wisely, that we should be wise. And we do that by constantly asking ourselves this simple question. When it comes to this purchase, when it comes to these things of my life, what is the wise thing to do? What is the wise thing to do? What would God want me to do? In Galatians 5, the apostle Paul is listing out the fruit of the spirit. And one of those fruit of the spirit is self-control. And how many of you would say that this is probably the, the fruit of the spirit that we need the most when it comes to our money and our finances? It's really just self-control. And, and, and it's the lack of self-control that leads to the loss of control when it comes to our money. The lack of self-control leads to the loss of control when it comes to our money. And we wanna be controlling our money and not having our money control us. If you're at home, come on, say amen, hit the like button, because that's good right there. We, we don't want our money dictating what we can do in our life. We wanna be telling our money where it's going so we can decide what to do with our life. And this, this lack of control leads to a loss of control, and we want that. So God has given us principles in scripture to set you up for financial success and security when it comes to our finances. But literally this world has an entirely different strategy when it comes to our money. And I'm gonna talk more about that last week and how we can kind of flip that script in our life and we can really begin to apply these principles and we'll get way more practical next week. But when you really break down the world's strategy when it comes to money, it's crazy. It, it, it's, a, it's a recipe. It's a formula for disaster. In Luke chapter 12, Jesus is telling the story about a farmer and uh, the blessings are coming in. He has more crop and a, a bigger harvest than he has barns to contain it. And Jesus tells the story of saying, hey, he's thought, what should I do with the extra? And we kind of feel bad for the farmer, right? He had so much money, he didn't even know what to do with it. And so he said, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna build bigger barns. I'm gonna open another bank account. I'm going to invest it into different things. And he says, what a fool you are. You, you had no idea that tonight your very life is gonna be taken from you, that you are gonna run out of time before you run out of money. And when you run out of time before you run out of money, you know what happens with your money? Someone else gets it. 
It goes to someone else. And so Jesus tells the story, and, and we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit deeper later on, but, but he pretty much uses this parable, a fictional story, to, to define what greed is according to Jesus. He gives us a definition for greed, and we've talked about this before at Adventure Church. We call it the consumption assumption. And this is that we, we make the assumption that everything that comes to me is for me. That everything that God brings into my life is for me and not necessarily for anyone else. It's the consumption assumption that everything that comes to me is for me. And in Luke chapter 12, when Jesus tells that parable, he says this, so watch out, verse 15, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Now that is something we all have to fight because the myth that we have to bust today, the myth busters that we have to make sure that we don't allow to, to, to take root in our life is this myth right here. Myth number one, and we're gonna bust myth number two next week, is that money equates happiness. That money will make us happy. This is a myth this is a lie that the world sells us and we have to reject this myth of more. Again, we think the answer is more and we have to reject the myth of more. We have to reject the myth that money is gonna make us happy. Listen, more money won't make you happy. Jesus is very clear on this. You see, money can add meaning to your life, but money is not the meaning of life. It can add meaning. I'm not gonna argue that. But listen to me, it's not the meaning of life. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 26, what good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and forfeit their soul? You see, we live in a culture where it's kind of this race to just newer, nicer, upgraded, renovated, right? Think about how our culture is. You will stand in line at the Apple store with an iPhone to get a new iPhone. It's just what we do and it's normal. We don't even think twice about it, right? Think about this, that you have perfectly good working cabinets, countertops, refrigerator, stove, right? It's all working just fine, but we renovate and upgrade. It's just what we do. It's part of our culture. But this mentality, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. And we're gonna talk about when you do it God's way, you'll have money to do those kind of things and you'll still be able to live a generous and blessed life. It's part of the blessings of God. But it, life is not a race to just newer and nicer and, and upgraded and renovated. And when we live that way, it leads us into bad habits and the bondage of debt. You see, most of us allow our income to determine our spending. Whatever we make, we spend, and more margin is what really eases the pressure in our life. Again, bust the myth of more, not more money. More money doesn't give you security. More money doesn't make you happier. You see, some of you make more than you've ever made in your life, and you feel more pressure than you've ever had. Think about when you had a job making, let's say, $45,000 a year and you lost that job, you probably didn't get too worried because you figured, well, there's a lot of jobs that make $45,000 a year. I'm just gonna go find another job. But when you lose a job that you're making 150,000 a year, it's a lot harder to find that than when you made 45. And the problem is, isn't because we make more money, it's because we spend what we make. We allow what we make to determine what we spend. And we're gonna talk practical next week about how we can get rid of that in our life. But the problem is, is that we spend and borrow until we're upside down. And then when something unexpected happens, a global plant pandemic, right? We're upside down. We get laid off, we get furloughed, and then we become enslaved to the lender, right? Proverbs 22, seven says, the borrower is slave to the lender. And a lot of Americans have purchased and borrowed their way into slavery. And the worst thing is, 
is that we did it to ourselves. No one made us do that. MasterCard didn't make you do it. Visa didn't. American Express didn't make you do it. And we get mad at them, but you're just a number to them. They're there to, that if you, if you use it to your advantage, is there to help you, not to hurt you. But we do it to ourselves because we allow the pressure in the ways of this world, in the culture, when it comes to our money, and we believe the myth of more. We believe the myth that money is going to make us happy, that more stuff, more possessions makes us happy. And Jesus says, that is a myth. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. He says, don't allow greed to take root in your life. Life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. Listen, if we just kind of bottom line this today, Jesus does that for us in Matthew 6, 24. He talks specifically to this idea of money and he says, no one can serve two masters. You'll either hate one and love the other or you'll be devoted to one and love and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Satan. Like that's what we think would say, right? Or he said, you can't serve two masters. It was either God's my master or the devil's my master. He says, no, no, you cannot serve both God and money. And today Jesus would tell you money is a much, much better servant than it is a master. We don't serve money. Our culture, we serve money. We worship money. We do everything we can to get money. Jesus says, that's not how it is in my kingdom. We don't serve money. Money serves us as we serve God. As we bless others, as we become generous, money is not my master. Money is not the meaning of life. Money is a tool to something meaningful. It's a tool that God puts in our hands to use for his kingdom, for his glory. And if we do it God's way, he says, not only will I take care of your kingdom, when you take care of my kingdom, I'll take care of your kingdom. But in order to live this out, and, and next week we're gonna talk more. I hope you'll turn back in. I know I told you what I'm talking about next week. I hope you'll come back for it because I really believe it's going to help you. But we have to learn this discipline of self-control. We have to learn how to say no to those things in our life because just because you can, just because you can buy it doesn't mean you should. You see, most of the financial tension we have is the result of wanting what we can't get, not needing what we don't have. Most of the financial tension is the result of wanting what we can't get, not needing what we don't have. You see, next week, I'm gonna get really practical on how we can really become financially free to be who God's called us to be, to be generous in our life and to receive the blessings of God in our life. But in order to do that, there's two things that have to happen. First of all, you gotta believe it. I said that earlier, but you gotta believe this. You can't just think, oh, it's a good message. Yeah, it's, it's all right. No, you gotta believe that God's way is better than the world's way. You gotta believe the truth that Jesus says, life does not consist in the abundance of our possessions. Money will not make you happy. Another house won't make you happy. Another car won't make you happy. A certain amount in your bank account will not make you happy. It's not gonna make you happy. The way to the blessed life, a happy life, a fulfilled life, Jesus says, happier is the person who orders their life around generosity. You gotta believe that in order to apply what we're gonna talk about next week. And then we have to get to a place where we believe that and we submit to it. Paul said, self-control that we need when it comes to our money is a fruit of the spirit of God. It's not a fruit that you have naturally. It's a fruit that the spirit produces in you. And so it's tapping in to the spirit, allowing the spirit to really fill your life by spending time with God, by being in his word, by worshiping him, by doing these things, then we get to a place of surrender where we believe it and then we begin to live it empowered by his spirit to do that. That's what he wants for you. That's what he has for you. And you can live the blessed life. You can be happy, but you gotta bust the myth. Money is not the answer. The myth of more is not the answer. It's Jesus and applying these principles to our life that will lead us to the fulfillment 
and the purpose that he has for us. So we gotta surrender to the spirit to have the self-control that we need in this area of our life. Listen, today, maybe you're watching and, and uh, first of all, maybe you do believe in God and you have a relationship with him, but you really haven't surrendered this area of money to him. You haven't released it to him. And today he's asking you to do that. You gotta trust him. You gotta surrender. You gotta believe and you gotta live it out. But some of you may be watching and you go, I don't, I don't really, I've never really put my faith in God, much less following his principles and really applying these things to our life. And that's the first step is really just submitting and surrendering to God and receiving Christ as Lord in your life, as the priority, as the center of your life and saying, I'm going to now revolve around him and what he says. And I'm telling you, friend, that that is the key to the blessed life. And so today, if you know, even right now, you're not serving God, you haven't surrendered to God and you're not living for him, you can do that. And you can receive his forgiveness and his grace and his spirit into your life by praying this simple prayer with me. So if that's you today, would you repeat this prayer with me right now as I, as I lead you in this? Would you just say this? Would you say, dear Jesus, today I submit to you. I surrender to you. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you died for me so I can live for you. And I receive your forgiveness and your mercy into my life. And I give your spirit control and I pray that you would produce your fruit in me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you said that prayer, we wanna follow up with you and, and uh, get some information in your hands. So make sure you go to adventure.church and go to the next steps portion on our website there. There's some more information and we just wanna follow up with you. But for the rest of you, thanks so much for tuning in today and make sure you come back for next week. I promise you, it's gonna be very helpful and practical to your life as we deal with the myths of money because I think most of us got money issues. We'll see you next week. Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining us for Adventure Church's online experience. My name is Justin, I'm the communications director here. And before we let you go, we just wanted to let you know about a few announcements. So first off, our virtual life groups have launched. We're looking for leaders for those groups as well. So go ahead and click uh, the link that you see below. And uh, next, next month, we're having a grocery give on June, 10th. We're so excited to partner with Delaware's people in need. So there's also a link below. Click on that for more information. Uh, and next, we believe in the power of prayer. We have a prayer team that's ready to go and to partner with you for anything that you need prayed for. So go ahead and text the word pray to the num number that you see below. And lastly, if you're new here or you've just been checking us out for a little bit and we want to connect with you, so go ahead and text the word connect to the number that you see below as well. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us and we just wish that you have a really good week.